Okay, let's take a look at what's going on in our ag commodity markets. From the, the beginning, it looks like we're dealing with very choppy markets here today. And I'll show you why. We had the corn, remember last night, it was down about a penny and three quarters at the end of the globex session. Then when we opened things up, it was like one and three quarters higher. And now we're seven and a quarter lower. Oh my gosh, this is going to be one of those days where you feel like you want to beat your head against the wall. You have December corn now at 570 and a quarter, down seven cents on the day, and that's only a tick or two off of our daily low at this point. So with our quotes provided by Bar Chart, let's move on, shall we? Let's go to soybeans. And on January, we're now down three and a half cents at 12.40 and three quarters after we had put in a high of 12.54 in the overnight and early morning trade. So what a turnaround there. That's off of its high now by about 13 cents. Let's check out our wheat market and we'll go to Chicago first here. In Chicago, December wheat, we're now two and a quarter lower at 8.14 and three quarters. That would be exactly a penny from our low. And uh, gosh, off of our high last night, we're off of that by about 10 and a half cents or so. Let's take a look at the Kansas City market for hard red wheat, see how it's doing so far. Well, it's getting weak in the knees with December down five and three quarter cents. We're at 8.27 and a quarter within two cents of our low of the day. And we are off of our overnight high by 12 cents right now. And spring wheat trade, we have December down 15 and three quarter cents. We're at 1034 and a quarter. And, and look at the low. We were actually four cents lower than this just here, uh, oh, just a couple of moments ago, I believe. So all kinds of pressure is showing up here in these uh, grain markets all of a sudden so far today. Now on the overnight sales, wanted to run those by you in case you missed it. If you just tuned in, we did have a sale of soybeans overnight. It was to unknown destinations. 264,000 tons, and we had a sale of corn to Mexico. It was 198,200 tons. Doesn't seem to amount to one iota of bullish influence today, and we'll find out by turning to our in-house guest, Mr. Chris Swift of Swift Trading, right here in Nashville. You walk in the door and the markets just flop. What's just, that about? Just put a lot of pressure on me this morning just right off the what? bat. So. <laughs> Did they hear you were coming in? What I mean, what happened anyway? You, you know, I'm not real sure, Marlon. Well, we've noticed most Monday mornings we've come into a little bit of a mixed market instead of being down sharply, and we did have some export sales that kind of came in this morning. But but the bigger picture is is we're heading into the end of the year. Uh, we do have a stronger dollar. Um, our Federal Reserve is seemingly uh, doing things to make that dollar stronger and continuing to keep the interest rates low to our public. And so I'm not real sure how we ever break this cycle of, of pushing money out into the system and then trying to raise the dollar. We're trying to combat commodity prices with the dollar, but yet we are still continually sending more money out to the consumer. That brings up a good question. Um, I've been talking with some producers here in the last few days. Everybody's looking forward to setting up their strategy for next year, for mm -hmm. 2022 and that growing season. And they're worried about making end of the year sales right now, but they're also looking ahead and wondering what in the world are they going to do about the high input costs? Mm -hmm. How do you market accordingly? Um, it's tough right now. What, uh, what things that we have heard is there's a lot less corn being piled up on the grounds this year. It leads us to believe that you had a lot more old crop sales back in the April, May, June time frame when corn prices were breaching over $7 a bushel. What a great time to relinquish and get some of those bins cleaned out. And so now we come into this year, we've got a 15 billion bushel corn crop. A lot of that has storage available to it. So I think it's the hands that it is sitting in right now is going to be less likely to turn it loose at, at any given price until we get closer to the spring of the year, see what those input costs are going to be and whether or not we're going to see any kind of changes in acreage. Let's take a look at crude oil and then we'll get into a All break right. here, shall we? On the crude oil market right now, you might be interested to know that December West Texas Intermediate Crude is now priced at 79.62. That's right, it has a seven in the front, not an eight. And it's down a dollar and 17 cents per barrel. That could be interesting if that continues that trend. We'll pause right here and we'll come back and talk more with Chris Swift right after this. Come on back. Well, we're back with Chris Swift and let's take a look at what is going on in our livestock trade today. Now, uh, on the futures trade on the live cattle board, we are still under a little bit of pressure today. December down 52 cents. We're at 131.60. February still just down only 7 cents at 136.02, while the April through June are anywhere from 25 to 52 lower. 
We're back with Chris Swift. That February contract is hanging in there much stronger relative to the other contracts. Why would that be? I think probably just that little bit of premium that it's carrying over the cash market, and the cash market is firm. December is right in line with the cash. So there's not much room to move it, but I believe that's what we're looking at is the February contract is maybe not underpriced, but it's priced accordingly, so therefore it's not going to drop off too awful much. Okay, so you were talking about the cash market. We have our livestock mm -hmm. summary, and just to review what we did last week in the cash cattle trade, live basis sales, 130 to 132. So that was better than the week before, yes. and the week before was better than the week yes. before that. Yes. Can we do it again. Yeah, we started this from 126. So 126 had been the price that we traded for multiple weeks in a row. Now we're up to between 30 and 32 and getting better uh uh, beef uh, prices out there. So I, I think it's kind of interesting to see that the consumer is being bombarded with a lot of inflationary factors, but continuing to eat beef at a, at a rate that we're not seeing any kind of declines in. Um, and the boxes have held together fairly well. And if we could ever get some processing to pick up just a little bit more, then I think that uh, pull on the cattle market will increase a little better. You know, there was a, a big school of thought that maybe the consumer would just back away from that beef retail counter because of the prices have been mm -hmm. really high this mm -hmm. past year or so. They just don't seem to have done that and I don't, they're hanging right I don't in think there. so. And, and when you also have the uh, kind of secondary cuts out there, then, then they have a lot of options to go to. And believe it or not, there's a lot of new cooking processes out here. This one pot is a phenomenal item to be able to take a, a beef uh, uh, cut of meat that you're not real fond of cooking or, or don't know what to do with and put it in that with a few vegetables and instantly you've got a meal. So it's incredible. Now you're making me hungry, darn it. <laughs> uh, let's look at feeder cattle right now and see what it's doing. On the feeder cattle trade, we're mixed. We have January down just two cents at 157.70. March up a nickel at 159.22. So uh, going both directions, but not very far either way. And on lean hogs, you had December down 35, but February up a dime at 80.65. Something for everybody there. May up a buck and a quarter. That's the latest on our livestock trade, Janet. I'll turn it back to you.